Christ is really, truly, it's intensely present in the, the species of bread and wine. The Eucharist in adoration is Jesus Christ. It's like completely Him. It's, he's, he's right there. It, it is Jesus. He's, he it see, is Jesus. We can go see Him anytime we want. So like when we die and like Jesus asks us if we want to like spend forever with Him, then it'll be kind of dumb if we answer yes and we never saw Him on earth. Catholics believe that, that Christ is present in the Eucharist for several reasons, but the biggest one being Scripture. So in John chapter 6, he said, this is my body, you know, my, you must eat, take my flesh and eat it truly, truly, really, really, I say to you, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. Also at the Last Supper, he said, this is my body. And then in the book of Revelation, it shows Christ as a lamb on the altar being slain, and that's, and it's supposed to be in heaven. So if that's going on in heaven, and we know there's only one sacrifice, so... That sacrifice is the sacrifice of the cross, the sacrifice going on in heaven, and it's the same sacrifice that happens when we go to Mass. So it's like the center of the entire universe, so that's also scriptural. We also believe it because what's well, backed up by all the Eucharistic miracles that happen where the bread not only becomes a substance, but it completely changes the form and even looks like flesh, or the what looks like wine actually even looks like blood. The Eucharist is, um, it first starts out as uh, bread and wine, but then when the priest says the words of consecration, it, uh, it becomes the body and blood of Christ. And the Eucharist really means to me that you are receiving Jesus' body and blood. This is why he died and he suffered through his passion. And this, you're receiving him into your body. So this is like, probably the best thing you could ever do because you're receiving God, you're becoming like him, and he's coming into your body and your soul. And you are receive Jesus you're much higher than the angels because they have never received Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Catholics should go to adoration because you're visiting somebody you love. So if God's, we're supposed to love God above all else and we show people that we love them by spending time with them and sacrificing out of our, our lives for them, for their good, we show Christ we love him by spending time with him. And not only does that show when we love him, but it also helps us because he grounds us in the truth, because he's the truth. I feel like to go to adoration because Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist and um, he has been waiting for you for like eternity and he always will be waiting. That's what I was so I think it's really important that you, you go see him at least once a week. I just find I just find that it's like impossible not to go and see him because you know it's like we're all completely lost. And I know. It's just like, it's just like I mean, Jeremy of her parents he's and everything. Like, and he's just always there. So I feel like the guidance counselor is always there, and like he won't be like a you know, they're always like nagging at you. He'll like he'll listen and he'll talk, and he just listens to you. And he's got the answers for everything. So yeah. it's kind of like and like yeah. it's a really peaceful place too. Catholics should go to adoration because that is the Lord Jesus Christ. If that was the King of Kings, say Pope Benedict XVI came down here and we went to pray to him for our help, what would you do? Would you skip it and go to something else or would you go to him and pray sincerely? That down there is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Father, our Lord God. And if we're willing to give that up to do something else, then what's it worth? What's it worth to us if God died for us? And we don't even acknowledge that. We don't acknowledge him in the Eucharist. I think that without Eucharistic adoration, you can't properly receive Christ. St. Augustine said, without adoring our Lord before receiving him, we commit sin because we're not giving Christ his proper respect. So unless we go to adoration, our eyes will never be trained to realize, whoa, who I'm receiving is Christ. Because even if you just go to adoration for five minutes, you're still not even, it's never going to hit you, but after being there 30 minutes to an hour, like Christ said, could you not watch with me one hour? It's kind of like our basis for the holy hour, and that helps us to, it helps uh, Christ to wash away all the sins we have in our life, and all the worries we have, and he can penetrate through, and then we're like, oh my gosh, this is really Christ, and then it starts to carry out into how we receive Holy Communion. What I like about adoration is that Jesus is actually there. He's real and present in the Eucharist, or all around you. He's, he's just there. It's, it's a great feeling. I mean, you're filled with him and you feel a sense of peace. It's just a great place to just think and figure out your problems. I mean, over there you have no problems. You're only with God.